Hello there, Dr. Mintz. This is a case. Well, let me just give you a quick overview before I tell you any history. That's a quick overview of the kidneys. Let's go through the kidneys again. All right, so that's a overview here, and here's the bladder. So this is a male with bilateral flank pain. Came in with low urine output. What does he have? Clearly, he's got hydronephrosis on both sides, right? Okay, so bilateral hydronephrosis. And I think it's helpful to use some kind of describing term, mild, moderate, severe. And this would probably be moderate to severe, pretty pronounced hydronephrosis. You don't see it that much more dilated than this. Maybe I'd go right to severe, actually, as I look at it because it's in the upper 10%, upper 5% of the hydronephrosis that I see. So let's just say severe hydronephrosis. And, and you can see both ureters, and it's easy to follow them, easier at least, when they're dilated. You can see this one's a little more dilated than that. And if you just stay with them, you can usually follow them pretty well. Here's the right, and here's the left, and you can see not only is there hydronephrosis, but there is perinephric stranding. Well, maybe a little bit. Not that much. What does that mean? Because we see it so often when you have a stone obstructing. I suspect that means that it's because it's long, that it's uh, been longer in developing. And it's been there. It didn't come on suddenly like a stone. But over time, it has caused this obstruction. And so the kidney has so much, somewhat acclimated to it. Okay, another little interesting feature here is you can see there's a duplicated renal collecting system on the left. So if you follow this part and then you follow this part, you'll see they each give up, give off a separate ureter. Here's one there. There's one there. And you see how they remain separate? Two ureters. And then maybe they could get joined around there. Let's see. They still look like they're kind of separate here, don't they? It's kind of hard to tell, though. Okay. So what's causing this? Anyway, severe hydronephrosis bilaterally. It's not a stone. Look at the bladder. What would you describe it as? What would you say briefly? Say it to yourself or think it. Thickened bladder wall. Severely thickened bladder wall. We see thickened bladder wall in cystitis pretty regularly, but never this thick, or almost never. So what might be causing that? Well, it's a male. Uh, looking around the prostate here. It doesn't look... Ooh, maybe it's a little bit big here. Kind of hard to tell. A lot of times the sagittals and coronals help, especially the coronals. Let's see what this, what this coronal does for us here. Let's see if that gives us a better view of the... Okay, here we have the thick, thick wall of the bladder. Foley catheter in place. I don't really see a big prostate at all pushing up on that bladder. Could it? What could it be, though? Basically... The bladder wall is thick like this when you get bladder outlet obstruction. The bladder wall musculature becomes hypertrophic to overcome the resistance to the bladder outlet obstruction. The most common cause of bladder outlet obstruction in a male, of course, is going to be prostatic enlargement. Most prostatic enlargement is benign prostatic hypertrophy, but certainly prostate Cancer is also a consideration here. Now, what do you think it might be in this case? See any signs to make you worried about malignancy? 
Look at this. Look at this left ureter, or the two left ureters, how thick they are, how dilated. Look at the right one here. See how nice these can be, and it's kind of messy too. All stranding around the ureters on both sides. Okay, you see anything? Well, look at those vertebra. They look kind of like osteopoikilosis. But it's not that. You've got a numerous little sclerotic areas in the vertebrae. And then look at this, the pelvic bones. Sclerotic, sclerotic. Prostate cancer often produces sclerotic metastases. That's the most common thing I see associated with prostate cancer. Sclerotic mets. Okay, and you can see them well on the axials too. So let's look here. Lesion there. Lesion there. There's one there in the vertebrae, and it very often spreads, spreads to the lumbar vertebrae, and it's believed because of the venous drainage from the pelvis goes partially through the basivertebral plexus, which courses up around the vertebral body and penetrates into the vertebrae. So look, at you just see one after another after another sclerotic lesions. Important thing to find. Could be missed without the right windowing. Look at these scler sclerotic lesions here. So clearly multiple sclerotic lesions. Don't see a big prostate, but prostate cancer may not produce a, a really big prostate. It may be an aggressive form that didn't get very big before it already spread. Here we have some inguinal adenopathy too. See that? See these nodes here? These are passable. Those are nice and small. Look here. That's a little big. This is a little big, but these are more decidedly enlarged here on the right, like that. So inguinal adenopathy. Let's see if there's anything in the abdomen. Thought I saw a little bit around here. I'm, no, I'm not sure. It looks a little suspicious, given what we've already seen. Probably pass it otherwise, but I'm suspicious like this. What is that? That doesn't belong there. There's no vessel there. So here we have a case of prostate cancer producing bladder outlet obstruction with severe hydronephrosis and hypertrophy of the urinary bladder wall.